a quick review of the intro to the genetics on the May 22nd Science 10 Biology class. It's a quick review of the information only. Uh, today was the introduction to genetics. Uh, a lot of this is a review from what we did in terms of the cell and mitosis, uh, but we're just going to overview from gene to protein. Uh, first, a definition. Genetics is the study of inheritable characteristics, uh, characteristics that you inherit from your mom or your dad, like eye color, um, height, um, things like that. Uh, the genetic code is the chemical language through which the information needed to produce a complete organism, uh, specifically DNA. It's located in the chromosomes. And the language, uh, which is DNA, is read to produce protein. Protein itself is made up of 20 different amino acids. When the amino acids are linked in different orders and lengths, you get a new protein. Human DNA has enough information to code for about 100,000 different kinds of proteins. And almost every cell in your body contains all the information needed to produce a new human. Every single one of your cells has all of your DNA. There are a few exceptions, like red blood cells, which are essentially sacs for hemoglobin, and the nucleus is removed. But by and large, every cell in your body has all the information to code for everything else. It just doesn't use it all, all the time. In terms of the genetic code, what we're considering first is what's known in biology as the central dogma. DNA is replicated in the nucleus, that DNA is then transcribed onto RNA. RNA is like a temporary memo. It just copies a small section of the DNA that's needed to code for a protein. That RNA is what is delivered to the ribosomes that are either in the rough endoplasmic reticulum or floating in the cytoplasm, and it will translate that message of RNA into amino acids and protein. So DNA is replicated in the nucleus. It is copied onto RNA, a small copy. That RNA moves into the cytoplasm and the rough ER where the ribosomes read it and translate the message into protein. That type of RNA is known as messenger RNA. Uh, there are other types of RNA that you'll become more familiar with in grade 11 and 12. RNA you can think of as the memo of the original DNA. It is not the complete instruction set, but just the small portion that is needed to code for one particular protein. So as an overview, DNA duplicates itself through a process of mitosis. This is known as replication. DNA makes a, a, it is copied uh, as an RNA copy. This is known as transcription. It is transcribed. Both of these uh, replication and transcription occur in the nucleus. The RNA is moved to the cytoplasm or rough endoplasmic reticulum where ribosomes then translate the RNA into protein. This process is known as translation. A reminder of the overall structure of DNA is a, a coiled helix in which the bases uh, that are on the inside, uh, the order of the bases up here, we can see G, T, G, that order is the actual code. Each strand, there's some redundancy there, we can predict the code on one strand given the coding of another strand. A, for example, always bonds with T, and C always bonds, bonds with G. So if, for example, this was a single strand of DNA, then we could create its pairing. A bonds with T. T bonds with A. T bonds again bonds with A. C bonds with G. C bonds with G. And G bonds with C. And then we can complete, uh, complete the complete ladder for a section of DNA. The genetic code of DNA is made of four bases, then C, G, T, and A. It is joined in chains, and the uh, strands come together in complementary pairs. Now, they're not identical pairs. It's not T to T or A to A, um, but they're always the same. G always goes with C. C always goes with G. 
Same with T going to A and A going to T. So they are, they're complementary. Uh, they're wound around each other so that they make a double helix. It's a regular ladder just twisted. And each three base code specifies one amino acid. For example, the code TAC on DNA in order uh, would code for the amino acid methionine once it's translated into RNA and then brought to the cytoplasm. Now, why is there a three letter code? Well, a three letter code. Imagine you just had the four bases A, T, C, and G. How many amino acids could you code for? Well, you could only code for four. There's there are approximately 20 amino acids, so this is not enough. Imagine then, what, what could you do to, with just, if you just have these four letters, how could you code for more? Well, you could pair them up. So A, T would code for one amino acid. Uh, a, A could code for another. A, C for another. And then A, G. And you could do this four times. T, A could code for one thing. Uh, T, T could code for another. T, TC and then TG and keep going through all of this four four and then another two sets of four we could then code for 16 amino acids this is close but not quite at a required 20 so in order to get enough we code for three a a a codes for one amino acid a a t a a, C, A, A, G. This will actually code for 64 different amino acids. There's only about 20, so this is in excess of what's needed. Um, but 16 is not enough, so we need a triplet code. I'm going to stop this video here. This is the first part of the review video for May 22nd for the Science 10 Genetics Introduction.